and this time we're going to take a look at hybridization with free electron pairs. Now, in this, we're going to start out with ammonia, NH3. Notice that nitrogen has five valence electrons, which could be used in bonding. A hydrogen has one valence electron in each atom, so each one of those, of course, is available for bonding. And how does an ammonia atom look like? Well, the Lewis structure would indicate that it looks like this. We have the three hydrogens connected to nitrogen with the one free electron pair there, and it gives you the impression that it's kind of a planar molecule, which is not at all the case. It's a tetrahedral shape, so this is a tetrahedron, uh, which means that the, let me write this, tetrahedron, like that, uh, which means that the hydrogen molecules are bent away from the plane downward in such a way that there's a bond angle of about 107 degrees, Notice that if there were four hydrogens, the bond angles would be 109.5 degrees, but there's a lot more repulsive forces between the free electron pair here and the bond electrons between the nitrogen and the hydrogen, which pushes the hydrogen a little bit further down, makes that a little bit more of a lopsided tetrahedron shape in a way, but very close to that shape. And the question now would be, well, what's going on to make it look like that? Notice that these three uh, bonds, those, through, those three bonds between nitrogen and hydrogen, they're all identical in shape, in length, in strength, and that would not normally come from a situation like this. Uh, so therefore, how is that accomplished? Well, we have a hybridization taking place. The two electrons in the 2s orbitals and the three electrons in the 2p orbitals come together and they push into a hybridized sp3 shape, which we know as being a tetrahedral in nature. So what happens then is it creates three hybridized bonds like that, three sp3 bonds, and a fourth sp3 bond sticking straight up like this. However, this one will not be utilized in bonding. Only these three will be utilized in bonding. So what happens to this one right there? Well, that will be the location now of the two extra electrons which have no place to go to do any kind of bonding. So what happens is one of the four hybridized orbitals, sp3 orbitals, is actually fully occupied and will therefore not be available to make a bond with anything else. That's why only these three will make a bond with the three hydrogens, and the last one is not occupied by the nitrogen. But nevertheless, this is what the bond structure will look like, or this is what the orbitals will look like. If we think about the um, nitrogen being at the very center of this, then we have one hybridized bond coming out to one direction like this with an electron in it, uh, one coming out at a, um, and actually, I probably want to redraw that because, because of the hybridized bond being over there or orbital being over there, these get pushed down. So it actually will be shaped a little bit below the axis like that. Then we have another one sticking out here this way. And then we have a third one towards the back and sticking out this way. And then we have a fourth one coming up here, which will contain two electrons and therefore will not bond with anything. Also notice that there's, of course, a little bit of extension on the back side of each one of those, like so. But those are places where the electron does not reside very much. So we typically ignore those little extensions. Notice that hybridized uh, orbitals tend to look like that in shape even though there's a small possibility for the electron to reside there a small amount of the time, we tend to ignore that and just look at the large portion of the orbital where the electron is most of the time. So now notice that these three hybridized orbitals now have a place for hydrogen to anchor around to in a nice arrangement in such a way that they all have the exact same angle between them of 170 degrees. And then we have this hybridized orbital, which is fully filled and does therefore not have any room to make any bonding. And so we end up with a molecule that looks just like that. So we have the nitrogen in the middle, we have the three hydrogens bent down somewhat, and we have the fully filled hybridized orbital sticking up straight up, making the tetrahedral shape without actually being bonded to a molecule or to an atom right there. And so therefore, we can see that hybridization also works even when not all of the hybridized orbitals actually make a bond.